The year is 1926. Howard Marmon, who was chief engineer over at Marmon Motor Car Company, wants to be the first automotive manufacturer to offer its customers a power plant no other company had to offer. Double the cylinders of the mighty Duesenberg of V16. You have to remember, back in this time period, peasant cars only had four and six cylinders. Having a V16 would really mean something truly special and different, as well as exclusive, because only heads of state would be able to afford this caliber of car. Most larger engines, like the V12 from this era, used two inline six cylinders, which shared a single crank. The V16 design was to follow that same design with two straight eights, but Howard didn't want the cylinders to sit offset. The Marmon V16 cylinder blocks and crankcase was cast as a single casting, whereas the Cadillac design was cast in three separate pieces cast as a single bank for each bank of cylinders as well as the crankcase. Starting with a clean slate based on a 45 degree cylinder bank angle built of aluminum alloy with push in iron cylinder liners. The cylinder liners were anchored in place with rubber seals. Rocker covers were secured by neural thumb screws. Stromberg two barrel downdraft carburetor tucked neatly between the two banks of cylinders. Single camshaft in the block with rocker arms, overhead valve actuation with a bore of 3.125 inches and a stroke of four inches, bringing displacement to 490.8 cubic inch displacement, which is bigger than the Cadillac engine. The Cadillac engine was 452 cubic inch displacement. The Marmon V16 had a larger bore of 1 8 inches bigger than the Cadillac V16. The Marmon V16 also used blade and fork connecting rods. Block cylinder heads were made of aluminum, as well as the oil pan and valve covers, which really helped out in the weight department. This engine only weighing 930 pounds. The heads used a cross flow design, fully pressurized oiling system, mechanical valve lifters, and even with those, this engine was said to have a smooth and quiet operation. Owen Knacker and James Bohannon both worked at Marmon. They both worked as engineers on the V16 engine. Owen Knacker would end up leaving Marmon to go to Cadillac. James Bohannon would also leave, and he went to Peerless to help them with their V16, which was one of the three Ps of prestige. Pierce Arrow and Packard are the other two. And it's sad to say that Marmon didn't beat Cadillac to market with the V16. They showed up late to the party, but they brought the goods, baby, rated at 200 horsepower, making it one of the most powerful American engines made during this era, with only the Duesenberg, both the naturally aspirated at 265 horsepower and the supercharged Model J Duesenberg engine rated at 320 horsepower. But with that said, the Duesenberg might have a higher top speed, but the Marmon could accelerate faster, and that would be a race worth watching. It could be called the Millions Race. Let's talk specs. 490.8 cubic inch displacement, 45 degree angle V16, 8 liters. It's good for 200 horsepower, 3400 RPM. An estimated anywhere between 385 to 400 pound feet or 502 newton meters at 1200 RPM with a bore of 3.125 inches and a stroke of 4 inches. Compression is 6.1, which was considered high compression at the time. Blade and four connecting rods, 5 main bearings the crankcase holds 10 quarts of oil testing these cars they got a theoretical top speed of 105 miles per hour marmon may have built the better v16 but was hemorrhaging money bad and didn't have the clientele or the protection of a conglomerate brand general motors had cadillac's back marmon didn't have any of that security Marmon would regroup and make vehicles for the military for World War II, and they're still around today. In 2008, Berkshire Hathaway bought a controlling stake in the company. All right, now it's time for Would You Rather. Three scenarios today. In the first scenario, would you rather have a 1931 Marmon or 1932 Marmon or 1933 Marmon? I'm going to leave this here for a minute. 
If you need more time, feel free, pause the video. On to the second scenario. 1931 Duesenberg Model J or 1931 Marmon or 1935 Auburn Speedster. Once again, I'm going to leave this here for a minute. If you need more time, feel free, pause the video. On to the third scenario. What is your favorite Marmon of all time? Put it in the comment section below. Now it's time for Name That Tune. First person to get both the name of the band and the song title correctly in the comment section will have their comment pinned to the top of it. Thank you all so much for coming out and watching this. If you'd like to get in touch with me, shoot me a comment in the comment section below. What other engines would you like to see featured on Engine Episode Wednesday? Put it in the comment section below. Until next time. Do